Hello, everyone. Do everyone hear me? OK, nice. So my name is Kevin Thierry, and I'm going to present you um, how we handle multi-user support in an embedded secure environment in Tizen Free Automotive. Uh, at first, this presentation sh should have been given by uh, Sabera Jetty, who is uh, one of my co-workers, but she couldn't make it here, so I'm replacing her. So I I'm going to first introduce uh, what are the, the needs for in-vehicle infotainment, and then I'll explain all the parts of, uh, of the, the solution we used in Tizen. Uh, I will begin with user management, so uh, what are the, the different kind of users we have, uh, I, will, I will expect the application framework, which is uh, the, the main part, the most important part. Uh, I will then talk about multi seats so how do we uh, handle the different seats in a car, and especially how do we move from one seat to another. Uh, then we will talk a bit about resource management, uh, for example, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, everything that, that allows uh, someone to connect another device. And uh, in the end, I make uh, uh, a, uh, a summarize about uh, what is the status of uh, the implementation, what works, what remains to be done. And uh, I have a small conclusion to, uh, to summarize all I said before. So uh, the, 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 the main need for IVI is multi sets By multi sets we mean we need to have several users that are going to, to use the system at the same time so we have one user on one seat with one user station. So what we want absolutely is to have user station separation. We don't want a user to mess up with uh, understand user content and application. And we need to be able to manage privilege. We, have, we need to have a user with, which will have uh, more uh, privilege to, uh, to control and configure uh, the, the main uh, resources. And we need to, we need to, uh, to manage uh, the peripherals for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, but it can also be uh, USB ports. Uh, so user management, uh, we have three types of user. We have the privileged user, regular users, and get users. Uh, the privileged user, of course, is the one who is kind of the administrator. He is able to install common application. Common application are uh, accessible to uh, all users which means regular users can, uh, can uh, use common applications. Regular users can also install applications, but there, there will be only user application. If uh, a user installs an application, he can only use it, and other user can't access it, can't use it. And regular user, as I said before, can use common application. Uh, the guest user is a bit particular because it's the user you'll have before logging in. So it has a very restrict, restricted access to, uh, to application. Uh, for example, the guest user uh, will be able to turn on or off the radio, but maybe he won't be able to uh, configure it or change the station. Of course, uh, if we have a user with separate uh, um, user environment, with a separate application, we have separate databases to manage the application and the packages. Uh, the, dif the difference between a package and an application is that a package can contain several applications. Package is, is really the, the archive you're going to, to download and install on the system. And we, you can have several applications in one package. Um, regarding package application, package installation, uh, we have what is called pre-installing. Pre-installing, in fact, uh, means we are going to copy the, the package from a shared area to a, a user area. Basically, user area is uh, the home of each user has its own home. And pre is copying the files and uh, initially the databases. Uh, we have database for uh, the package and the application. And when we want to install it, we will use the PKG CMD command to really install the application so we can launch it after. Uh, every application is unique, in fact, uh, two users can have exact the, same, the, same, the exact same application installed, but it won't be the same binary. Everyone, uh, each, each one of user, each, each user will have it in, in its own uh, directory. So we need to have a unique application ID, so we add the username to the application uh, ID. And the application ID is itself composed of a package ID and the application name. 
uh, about package installation, uh, we have different type of packages in Tizen, uh, w WGT, uh, XPK, they are, they are both uh, uh, web application. Uh, the difference between the two is that XPK uh, is for uh, crosswalk, crosswalk application. Crosswalk is the uh, web runtime engine. And what we wanted is to have only uh, one uh, installer for all the, uh, the different, uh, the different uh, packages. So uh, we're using a PKG CMD and PKG MJS server. And we, we then use different backends to install those, those different packages. Uh, here, on the, here we can see that there are only a few steps that are different from a package from, to a package from another, uh, which is uh, incompress the, the archive, which is quite obvious. You can have different format. And uh, the manifest parser, every, every uh, package has a manifest. Uh, by manifest, it's just a general, general text file. It can be JSON or XML. And it contains the application name uh, and several other information that are needed to install the, the package. So here we can have uh, XML JSON, so we need different parser. Um, uh, when it comes to generate a symbolic link, uh, it's very particular to, uh, to a web application because when you launch a web application, you don't launch the application, you launch the web engine, the web, the, um, the, the web browser. In, in the, um, so you, your, your binary won't be the application, it will be the, the, the web runtime engine that will then load the application. And the, the main motivation behind that is to uh, manage the security independently of the, uh, of the package. You want to, uh, to have a, a uniformization of, uh, of uh, the security. So uh, if you add a new, a new, uh, a new kind of package, it, the security will be under the same way for all packages. Uh, so uh, here, uh, in the lowest part, you can see uh, the package manager server on the different backend. Um, how they interact with uh, the, security ma the security manager server. The role of the security manager server is to uh, set the, the security label on the files. So uh, right now, uh, I'm not sure it's something that, uh, that is used. Right now, they're statically uh, uh, set. But uh, in the end, uh, we aim at having the security manager server being able to set automatically the, the, the label for the security. Labels are used to, uh, to uh, prevent a user from, uh, from using uh, uh, another uh, user application, for example. When it comes to launching an application, so a user launch wants to launch an application, and it will communicate with uh, the AMD daemon. The AMD daemon will know uh, what, what user, which, which user uh, launches the application, uh, asking for the, uh, um, communicating with the AMD session agent. Every user, uh, when it launches an, uh, its user session, launch an AMD session agent, whose role is to uh, communicate with the AMD daemon. And then we can see that uh, uh, AMD will, will know uh, which application database uh, it has to use, depending on which user launched the application. So uh, multi-seat. Uh, the, the objective in multi is to be able to switch from one, to one seat to another without losing this application, without having to log, uh, logging out, which is uh, uh, the actual way to doing it on a desktop. So and also when, we see you, when you switch from one seat to another, you need to be able, uh, you need to prevent user from interacting with another user content. So we, we keep the user session separated, so a user has, uh, it's, uh, has one, se one user session, it's not a user session that is uh, shared amongst users. But we use only one Western service for all users. So uh, to, to achieve that, we just, have a, we just imagine that we have a, a big display. And this display is uh, separated into several other uh, areas. And those areas are uh, displayed on the screen of the users. And we prevent uh, the cursor or the application from leaving the, those areas. Uh, like that, we can easily switch uh, from one seat to another. We just have to move the, the application from one area to another. And uh, the, the application framework should be, should be the one who, who, who has a role to move the application from a display to another for Western. 
So uh, there's only one issue with process management, management is to uh, manage the conflicts. For example, if uh, one user wants to set a particular IP uh, on the Wi-Fi device, another wants to set another IP, uh, we, need, we need a way to prevent that issue. So uh, the solution is quite simple in the end, is to have only one privileged user that can configure, that can configure it, which is kind of the, the administrator, as I said before. Uh, another, another thing that needs to be taken into, into account uh, is uh, to define shared and exclusive res resources. For example, uh, if I connect my phone uh, with Bluetooth to access my files, I, I maybe I don't want to, to share it with other user, and I, I don't want them to access it. And so you also have the opposite case where you want to share it so anybody can access it. So we need to have a, a way to configure that and to configure which user ac can access what. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna summarize wha what has been done and then what remains to be done. So we removed all uh, hard-coded paths, uh, UID and GID in an uh, application. Uh, a lot of applications were running with uh, hard-coded uh, name, username in, uh, in them. So uh, almost everything has been removed because there are still uh, some uh, developers that uh, are adding it back. So it's kind of uh, an endless uh, job. Uh, Regarding security management, we don't have a smart label from a legacy code from Tizen 2 uh, because the security framework totally changed from Tizen 2 uh, to Tizen 3. And uh, right now we, def we define a, a, a privileged user uh, with the GID system. In fact, if a user is part of the system group, we consider him, him as, a, as a privileged user. But that's, that's a rule that can be changed uh, quite easily. That's like a, a, a choice that has been made, to a quick choice that has been made, but it's not, it's not a, something that can't, can't be changed. Uh, regarding user databases, uh, no uh, databases are separated, so each user has its own databases regarding his application in its own directory, and uh, common application has uh, a database uh, that is uh, accessible to, in fact, to, uh, in a shared area. And uh, the binary to, uh, to, um, to initialize the databases are done and are working. Uh, the C API, uh, the core API now uh, is duplicated for the function uh, linked to, um, to uh, application management. We have uh, the one we had before, and we had the exact same one, but we had the UID. So you, we can pass the, uh, the user ID to, um, to the package managers. Um, this is needed because a lot of daemon are running as root. So if you, get, if you want to get the ID of who is using it, if you, get, if you run the get your ID, you just get the root your ID, not the UID of the user. That's why you need to, uh, to pass it as a parameter when you call a, a core API function. Um, yeah, the multi-user feature is uh, almost complete in, uh, in the media packages. Uh, I, will, I will talk about that uh, later on give an example. And uh, we can easily install and launch application. I, I gave the example uh, here to, to install an application and to, to launch it. So uh, KGCMD is just a command line, but of course it's just for, for developer. So what remains to be done? Uh, the, device, the, the display management is, uh, is not quite done yet. Uh, for example, we, we'd like to have the privileged user being able, being able to uh, move uh, an application from uh, one display to another or launch di directly an application on uh, another user display. Uh, a simple use case would be uh, uh, a, pa a parent who wants to, to, say to, to play a video for his child uh, who is sitting in the back, and so he doesn't want to, to launch it on his screen, but on the screen of his children. Uh, security management, uh, we need to set correct permissions right now, so uh, I think the security manager is almost done. So it should be, it should be done uh, soon. And uh, share data between applications from the state package. Right now, all applications are uh, isolated from one another. And all application data is also is isolated. So what we, we want to do is to share data between applications from the same package, but only from the same package. Uh, regarding media server, uh, I said it was almost done. In fact, uh, it's possible to, uh, to use it uh, in a multi-user setup, if you're a regular user, not, a, not as, a, as a common application. Yeah, so what remains to be done is to manage the, the database 
for common application for the media server. Uh, so all, all multi-user feature in non-media package remains to be done, which means uh, we need to, uh, to manage uh, the database mainly, or to set, set it up, or to set up, set it up uh, properly. And Bluetooth, Bluetooth is kind of um, uh, the, maybe the most difficult task. Uh, right now, only the first step is done. You can connect your phone, and uh, only, only you uh, will have access to it. But uh, there's a lot of things to, do, to re that remains to be done. For example, uh, sharing, sharing it uh, with other people. Um, that's kind of a, a, a difficult task, uh, which, which remains to be done. And uh, Ynet is not uh, yet also uh, uh, ready for multi-user. So uh, here is the example of, um, of the media, media package. Um, in fact, what changed between uh, multi-users, so what we have right now and what we had before, is that right now we have two databases that are in the user environment. Before, we had only one database, and we didn't have the, the CRPI media content, the CRPI function that was duplicated. So in fact, we had only, uh, it, it was like if we had only one user and everybody was using the same thing, the same database. And just for information, so media server manages uh, your, your media library. So media scanner just uh, scan for your files. And media thumbnail, thumbnail create uh, miniatures of, uh, of the, the media you have. So uh, to conclude, um, here are uh, the, the API needs and what we need to, uh, to uh, answer them. So uh, we separated uh, user sessions uh, with an individual environment, so we don't share one session for everybody. And one common environment, so we have a base with ap base application for uh, every user. Uh, we have one Western service in order to move from one to another. And uh, peripheral management is done mainly by privileged user, but we can allocate a uh, user, uh, allocate a resource for a special user, or we can give some uh, some control to another user. And uh, reg regarding privileged requirements, uh, here we have a security manager uh, which gives uh, permission access to some files, to all files. In fact, all files are, have a security label, and that's a label we decide, uh, we permit to, uh, to, uh, to allow or prevent a user from launching an application or even just reading the file. So uh, I put all the, the documentation regarding uh, multi-user on uh, the application framework we have on, on the wiki. Uh, if you have a te technical question, like uh, very precise, or if you test and you uh, saw bugs, um, or want to get involved, uh, I put the, the dev mailing list. Uh, it's very active, so just ask, you have an answer very, very quickly. Um, if you have any question, uh, I'm ready to answer them. Yes? Uh, can you repeat, please? Yes. Uh, I don't think we're using systemd containers. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, um, namespaces. In fact, I, I didn't work much on multi-user, so uh, I don't have all the, the technical details about it. But uh, that's a question that, uh, that can be asked on the dev mailing list, I think. Oh, I, can f I also know people who are working on it, so maybe I, I can uh, put you in contact with them. <laughs> Any other question? Yes? Uh, sorry, I don't hear you. Uh, that's a good question. Technically, yes. Yes, you, you can have more than one. Uh, nothing uh, prevents you from, from having one, more than one. But uh, you end up having the same issue that we're trying to prevent. For example, if you have two privileged users connected at the same time, and they both want to change the IP address of your Wi-Fi uh, device, you end up with the same issue you had before. So it would be better to have only one privileged user. But there is nothing right now that enforces that. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sort of an administrator. Uh, you can't become a privileged user. Okay, but, you know, I, uh, I in fact, you, you could because you can you can still uh, join like the system group, but in a in a in a product, it's I don't think it's a in the workflow to move one regular user to the privileged user. I think you'll have one uh, privileged user that you'll have at the beginning, and then it will control everything else. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe I can put the. Uh, which one is the best? Okay. Uh, in fact, when a user launches an application, he can launch an application, uh, or he can connect to a daemon, and daemon are run as root. So uh, if, you, if uh, this daemon needs to write uh, data specific to this user, this to the why, which user on this application, so where to put the, the data, we want to put it in the home. So, but the daemon has no, no way to know uh, which user launched it. So we, we have to pass through the core API the UID of the user. So the daemon know which user, or must the service know which user launched it, so where to put the data in which home directory. That's the reason. Because, but for example, for Bluetooth, you can't have uh, a one Bluetooth daemon for uh, each user because it's just one Bluetooth daemon for one device, one Bluetooth device. Uh, in fact, everything goes with for the UID, user ID. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if, uh, if anyone wants to talk more about that, or other Tizen aspect, uh, even Yocto, because I worked a lot of, uh, on the Yocto, Yocto port, uh, we can talk uh, after uh, outside of the room. Thank you for your attention.